Assassin's Creed Mirage takes us all the way back to 9th century Baghdad to live the origin story of Basim. We first met Basim in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and Mirage connects back to that game in a couple of important ways. To explore how those connections are forged, as well as answer any lingering questions, we're going to fully break down the ending of Assassin's Creed Mirage. Full spoilers are ahead, so leap away now if you haven't finished the game or don't want to know. Basim's quest to cut off the head of the snake brings him to the Palace of the Green Dome. Here he comes face to face with Al Bahamut, the leader of the Order in Baghdad. They are revealed to be Kabiha, the concubine of the Khalifa who was killed by Nihal during the prologue. But it turns out that Kabiha has been hunting for Basim as much as he has been hunting for her. Our prodigal sign has arrived. Kabiha's son, Abu Abdullah, saw the ancient disc activate when young Basim touched it in the palace. He told his mother what he saw, and so for years Kabiha has known that Basim is connected to the Isu, an ancient civilization that ruled the world before the era of humanity. And so she attempts to coerce him, promising that he will learn everything of who he is in a secret chamber beneath the Hidden One's temple of Alamut. But before she can say any more, Roshan assassinates her. The master assassin warns Basim that if he goes looking for answers, she will kill him. Follow the path she laid out for you, and I will kill you myself. Angered by Roshan's actions, Basim and Nihal journey to Alamut. Beneath the temple, Basim discovers that his touch awakens a stone wall, which fades away to reveal a technologically advanced vault door. Roshan interrupts and tries to prevent Basim from proceeding, but he defeats her in combat. Nihal teaches Basim how to open the vault door with his blood, and a deep chamber is revealed. The architecture is clearly Isu in design, similar to what we've seen in many other Assassin's Creed games. Inside, Basim discovers a prison with a sarcophagus at its centre. He opens the sarcophagus, only to find Nihal inside. It, it cannot be! It is revealed that Nihal is actually Basim. In a Fight Club-like twist, it turns out that she's an aspect of Basim's personality that manifests itself as an imaginary friend. And so everything Nihal did, Basim did, right down to killing the Khalifa. And this is where Mirage connects to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. In Valhalla, we learn that Basim is actually the reincarnation of Loki. Nihal represents the memories of the original Loki locked away inside Basim. Okay, yeah, this is going to take a little bit of explaining. What am I? Something more than man. In Assassin's Creed lore, the ancient Isu civilization is the inspiration for human mythology. Loki was part of the Azir branch of the Isu, which directly influenced Norse mythology. Thousands of years ago, the Isu were threatened by an apocalypse event, and so they developed a supercomputer called Yggdrasil to help them survive it. The Azir Isu uploaded their consciousness into Yggdrasil, which would then distribute them into the human gene pool centuries later. This effectively allowed the Azir to leapfrog over the apocalypse and be reborn again in human bodies. The name Nihal is derived from the Persian language and means newly planted tree. Thus Nihal is Yggdrasil's newly planted seed of Loki. What are you? Look! See for yourself! In the Isu chamber, Nihal uses the ancient disc to activate a hologram. This suggests that the disc is similar to a memory seal, an Isu device that stores memories. The hologram depicts two figures, a prisoner and a jailer. The prisoner is shown to be Basim, while the jailer is the genie, a supernatural spectre that has haunted Basim all through the game. Basim realises that the genie represents the torture he endured in this prison during his previous life as Loki. He makes peace with these dark memories, destroying the genie's hold over him. So if the prisoner hologram is Basim, and thus represents the experiences of Loki during the Isu era, then who is the jailer? For that, we can look to the Norse myths that have inspired this part of the Assassin's Creed story. In the mythology, Loki is taken into a cave and bound to a stone as punishment for his involvement in the poisoning of Baldur, the son of Allfather Odin. During the events of both Assassin's Creed Valhalla and its expansion, Dawn of Ragnarok, we learn that the Isu version of Loki also orchestrated Baldur's poisoning. It seems sensible to assume, then, that this Isu chamber is the Assassin's Creed version of the Binding of Loki myth. And so the Jailer is almost certainly Odin. And who is Odin? Well, none other than Eivor, the human reincarnation of the Allfather and protagonist of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Walk with me. 
After making peace with his memories of being imprisoned and tortured, Basim becomes one with Nihal. This symbolises the merging of Basim's human body and Loki's consciousness. Loki has now been fully restored and reincarnated. We can see that Basim has fully transformed into Loki when his eagle, Enkidu, rejects him. Animals are generally considered to be highly intelligent and sensitive, and so we can see here Enkidu sensing the evil trickster within their master. In the final scene, Basim swears vengeance on those who tortured him should they walk this earth. This foreshadows his quest to find and kill Odin, which will bring him to Eivor during the events of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Come closer, Eivor. Let me get a better look at you. Leave him be, Basim. For too long I stared at the sun, it blinded me to the truth, that it was you, it was you I wanted all along. And that's the ending of Assassin's Creed Mirage Explained. For more, check out our review, as well as how long it took us to finish the game. And for everything else, stick with IGN. <laughs>